All right. Good morning, everyone. It is uh, good to be with you this uh, Sunday morning. I'm excited to uh, to finish up the book of Leviticus with you today. We're reading Leviticus 25 through 27, and uh, then we're going to uh, finish up uh, chapter 17 of the book of Proverbs. So let's jump into it and let's finish up this book. Uh, the Lord said to Moses uh, at Mount Sinai, <clears throat> speak to the Israelites and say to them, when you enter the land, I'm going to give you the land itself must observe a Sabbath to the Lord. For six years, sow your fields and for six years, prune your vineyards and gather their crops. But in the seventh year, the land is to have a year of Sabbath rest, a Sabbath to the Lord. Do not sow your fields or prune your vineyards. Do not reap what grows of itself or harvest the grapes of your untended vines. The land is to have a year of rest. Whatever the land yields during the Sabbath year will be food for you, for yourself, your male and female servants, and the hired worker and temporary resident who live among you, as well as for your livestock and the wild animals in your land. Whatever the land produces may be eaten. Count off seven Sabbath years, seven times seven years, so that the seven Sabbath years amount to a period of 49 years. Then have the trumpet sounded everywhere on the 10th day of the seventh month on the, on the day of atonement. Sound the trumpet throughout your land. Consecrate the 50th year and proclaim liberty throughout the land to all its inhabitants. It shall be a jubilee for you. Each of you is to return to your family property and to your own clan. The 50th year shall be a jubilee for you. Do not sow, do not reap what grows of itself, or harvest the untended vines. For it is a jubilee, and is to be holy for you. Eat only what is taken directly from the fields. In this year of jubilee, everyone is to return to their own property. If you sell land to any of your own people, or buy land from them, do not take advantage of each other. You are to buy from your own people on the basis of the number of years since the Jubilee, and they are to sell to you on the basis of the number of years left for harvesting, harvesting crops. When the years are many, you are to increase the price, and when the years are few, you are to decrease the price, because what is really being sold to you is the number of crops. Do not take advantage of each other, but fear your God. I am the Lord, your God. Follow my decrees and be careful to obey, obey my laws, and you will live safely in the land. Then the land will yield its fruit, and you will eat your fill and live there in safety. You may ask, what will we eat in the seventh year if we do not plant or harvest our crops? I will send you such a blessing in the sixth year that the land will yield enough for three years. While you plant during the eighth year, you will eat from the old crop, and will continue to eat from it until the harvest of the ninth, the, the ninth year comes in. The land must not be sold permanently because the land is mine, and you reside in my land as foreigners and strangers. Throughout the land that you hold as a possession, you must provide for the redemption of the land. If one of your fellow Israelites becomes poor and sells some of their property, their nearest relative is to come and redeem what they have sold. If, however, there is no one to redeem it for them, but later on they prosper and acquire sufficient means to redeem it themselves, they are to determine the value for the years since they sold it and refund the balance to the one to whom they sold it. They can then go back to their own property. But if they do not acquire the means to repay, what was sold will remain in the possession of the buyer until the year of Jubilee. It will be returned in the Jubilee and they can go back then go back to their property. Anyone who sells a house in a walled city retains the rights of redemption a full year after its sale. During that time, the seller may redeem it. If it is not redeemed before a full year has passed, the house in the walled city shall become, belong permanently to the buyer and the buyer's descendants. It is not to re be returned in the Jubilee. But houses in villages without walls around them are to be considered as belonging to the open country. They can be redeemed and they are to be returned in the Jubilee. The Levites always have the right to redeem their houses in the Levitical towns which they possess. So the property of the Levites is redeemable. 
that is, a house sold in any town they hold and is to be returned in the Jubilee because the houses in the towns of the Levites are their property among the Israelites. But the pasture land belonging to their towns must not be sold. It is their permanent possession. If any of your fellow Israelites becomes poor and are unable to support themselves among you, help them as you would a foreigner and stranger so they can continue to live among you. Do not take interest or any profit from them, but fear your God so that they may continue to live among you. You must not lend them money at interest or sell them food at a profit. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt to give you the land of Canaan and to be your God. If any of your fellow Israelites becomes poor and sell themselves to you, do not make them work as slaves. They are to be treated as hired workers or temporary residents among you. They are to work for you until the year of Jubilee. They, then they and their children are to be released and they will go back to their own clans and to the property of their ancestors. Because the Israelites are my servants whom I brought out of Egypt, they must not be sold as slaves. Do not rule over them ruthlessly, but fear your God. Your male and female slaves are to come from the nations around you. From them you may buy slaves. You may also buy some of the temporary residents living among you and members of their clans born in your country, and they will become your property. As you can bequeath them to your children as inherited property, and you can make them slaves for life, but you must not rule over your fellow Israelites ruthlessly. If a foreigner residing among you becomes rich, and any of your fellow Israelites become poor and sell themselves to the foreigner or to a member of the foreigner's clan, they retain the right of redemption after they have sold themselves. One of their relatives may redeem them. An uncle or a cousin or any blood relative in their clan may redeem them. Or if they prosper, they may redeem themselves. They and their buyers, their buyer, are to count the time from the year they sold themselves up to the year of Jubilee. The price for their release is to be based on the rate paid to a hired worker for that number of years. If many years remain, they must pay for their redemption a larger share of the price paid for them. If only a few years remain until the year of Jubilee, they are to commute, compute that and pay for their redemption accordingly. They are to be treated as workers hired from year to year. You must see to it that those to whom they owe service do not rule over them ruthlessly. Even if someone is not redeemed in any of these ways, they and their children are to be released in the year of Jubilee. For the Israelites belong to me as servants. They are my servants whom I brought out of Egypt. I am the Lord your God. Do not make any idols or set up an image or a sacred stone for yourselves and do not place a carved stone in your land to bow down before it. I am the Lord your God. Observe my Sabbaths and have reverence for my sanctuary. I am the Lord. If you follow my decrees and are careful to obey my commands, I will send you rain in its season and the ground will yield its crops and the, tree, the trees their fruit. Your threshing will continue until grape harvest and the grape harvest will continue until planting and you will eat all the food you want and live in the safety in your land. I will grant peace in the land and you will lie down and no one will make you afraid. I will remove wild beasts from the land and sword will not pass through your, through your country. You will pursue your enemies and they will fall before the sword before you. Five of you will chase a hundred and a hundred of you, of you will chase 10,000 and your enemies will fall by the sword before you. I will look on you with favor and make you fruitful and increase your numbers and I will keep my covenant with you. You will still be eating last year's harvest when you will have to make move it out to make room for the new. I will put my dwelling place among you and I will not abhor you. I will walk among you and be your God and you will be my people. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt so that you would no longer be slaves to the Egyptians. I broke the bars of your yoke and enabled you to walk with heads held high. But if you will not listen to me and carry out all these commands, and if you reject my decrees and abhor my laws and fail to carry out all my commands and so violate my covenant, then I will do this to you. I will bring you on, on you sudden terror wasting diseases and f fever that will destroy your sight and sap your strength. You will plant seed in vain because your enemies will eat it. I will set my face against you so that you will be defeated by your enemies. Those who hate you will rule over you and you will even flee 
even when no one is pursuing you. If after all this you will not listen to me, I will punish you for your sins seven times over. I will break down your stubborn pride and make the sky above you like iron and the ground beneath you like bronze. Your strength will be spent in vain because your soil will not yield its crops, nor will tree, the trees of your land yield their fruit. And if you remain hostile towards me and refuse to listen to me, I will multiply your afflictions seven times over as your sins deserve. I will send wild animals against you, and they will rob you of your children, destroy your cattle, and make you so few in number that your roads will be deserted. If in spite of these things you do not accept my correction, but continue to be hostile toward me, I myself will be hostile towards you and will afflict you for your sins seven times over. And I will bring the sword on you to avenge the breaking of the covenant. When you withdraw into your cities, I will send a plague among you, and you will be given into enemy hands. When I cut off your supply of bread, ten women will be able to bake your bread in one oven, and they will dole out the bread by weight. You will eat, but you will not be satisfied. If in spite of this, you still do not listen to me, but continue to be hostile toward me, then in my anger, I will be hostile toward you, and I myself will punish you for this, your sins seven times over. You will eat the flesh of your sons and the flesh of your daughters. I will destroy your high places, cut down your incense altars, and pile your dead bodies on the lifeless forms of your idols, and I will abhor you. I will turn your cities into ruins and lay waste your sanctuaries, and I will take no delight in the pleasing aroma of your offerings. I myself will lay waste the land so that your enemies who live there will be appalled. I will scatter you among the nations and will draw out my sword and pursue you. Your land will be laid waste and your cities will lie in ruins. Then the land will enjoy its Sabbath years all the time that it lies desolate and you are in the country of your enemies. Then the land will rest and enjoy its Sabbath. All the time that it lies desolate, the land will have the rest it did not have during the Sabbaths you lived in it. As for those of you who are left, I will make their hearts so fearful in the lands of their enemies that the sound of a wind leaf, leaf, a windblown leaf will put them to flight. They will run as though fleeing from the sword, and they will fall even though no one is pursuing them. They will stumble over one another as though fleeing from the sword, even though no one is pursuing them. So you will not be able to stand before your enemies. You will perish among the nations. The land of your enemies will devour you. Those of you who are left will waste away in the lands of their enemies because of their sins. Also, because of their ancestors' sins, they will waste away. But if they will confess their sins and the sins of their ancestors, their unfaithfulness and their hostility towards me, which made me hostile towards them, so that I sent them into the land of their enemies, then when their uncircumcised hearts are humbled and they, they pay for their sin, I will remember my covenant with Jacob and my covenant with Isaac and my covenant with Abraham, and I will remember the land. For the land will be deserted by them and will enjoy its Sabbaths while it lies desolate without them. They will pay for their sins because they rejected my laws and abhorred my decrees. Yet in spite of this, when they are in the land of their enemies, I will not reject them or abhor them so as to destroy them completely, breaking my covenant with them. I am the Lord, their God. But for their sake, I will remember the covenant with their ancestors, whom I brought out of Egypt in the sight of the nations to be their God. I am the Lord. These are the decrees, the laws, and the regulations that the Lord established at Mount Sinai between himself and the Israelites through Moses. And the Lord said to Moses, Speak to the Israelites and say to them, if anyone makes a special vow to dedicate a person to the Lord by giving the equivalent value, set the value of a male between the ages of 20 and 60 at 50 shekels of silver, according to the sanctuary shekel. For a female, set her value at 30 shekels. For a person between the ages of 5 and 20, set the value of a male at 20 shekels and a female at 10 shekels. For a person between one month and five years, Set the value of a male at five shekels of silver and that of a female at three shekels of silver. For a person six years old or more, set the value of a male at 15 shekels and, a, and of a female at 10 shekels. If anyone making the vow is too poor to pay the specified amount, 
The person being dedicated is to be presented to the priest who will set the value according to what the one making the vow can afford. If what they vowed is an animal that is acceptable as an offering to the Lord, such an animal given to the Lord becomes holy. They must not exchange it or substitute a good one for a bad one or a bad one for a good one. If they should substitute one animal for another, both it and the substitute become holy. If what they vowed is a ceremonially unclean animal, one that is not acceptable as an offering to the Lord, the animal must be presented to the priest who will judge its quality as good or bad. Whatever value the priest then sets, that is what it will be. If the owner wishes to redeem the animal, a fifth, a fifth must be added to its value. If anyone dedicates their house as something holy to the Lord, the priest will judge its quality as good or bad. Whatever value the priest then sets, so it will, will remain. If the one who dedicates their house wishes to redeem it, they must add a fifth to its value, and the house will again become theirs. If anyone dedicates to the Lord part of their family land, its value is to be set according to the amount of seed required for it, 50 shekels of silver to an omer of barley seed. If they dedicate a field during the year of Jubilee, the value that has been set remains. But if they dedicate a field after the Jubilee, the priest will determine the value according to the number of years that remain until the next year of Jubilee, and its set value will be reduced. If the one who dedicates the field wishes to redeem it, they must add a fifth to its value, and the field will again become theirs. If, however, they do not redeem the field, or if they have sold it to someone else, it can never be redeemed. When the field is released in the year in the Jubilee, it will become holy. Like a field devoted to the Lord, it will become priestly property. If anyone de dedicates to the Lord a field they have bought, which is not part of their family land, the priest will determine its value up to the year of Jubilee, and the owner must pay its value on that day as something holy to the Lord. In the year of Jubilee, the field will revert to the person from whom it was bought, the one whose land it was. Every value is to be set according to the sanctuary shekel, 20 giras to the shekel. No one, however, may dedicate the firstborn of an animal, since the firstborn already belongs to the Lord, whether an ox or a sheep, it is the Lord's. If it is one of the unclean animals, it may be bought back, at its set value, adding a fifth of the value to it. If it is not redeemed, it is to be sold at its set value. But nothing that a person owns and devotes to the Lord, whether a human being or an animal or family land, may be sold or redeemed. Everything so devoted is most holy to the Lord. No person devoted to destruction may be ransomed. They are to be put to death. A tithe of everything from the land, whether grain from the soil or fruit from the trees, belongs to the Lord, it is holy to the Lord. Whoever would redeem any of their tithe must add a fifth of the value to it. Every tithe of the herd and flock, every tenth animal that passes under the shepherd's rod will be holy to the Lord. No one may pick out the good from the bad or make any substitution. If anyone does make a substitution, both the animal and its substitute become holy and cannot be redeemed. These are the commands the Lord gave Moses at Mount Sinai for the Israelites. All right. Congratulations on uh, finishing uh, another book in the Bible, the book of Leviticus. Now let's jump in and, and uh, read Proverbs 17, uh, 15 through the end of the chapter. Acquit, acquitting the guilty and condemning the innocent, the Lord detests them both. Why should fools have money in, the, in hand to buy wisdom? when they are not able to understand it. A friend loves at all times, and a brother is born for a time of adversity. One who has no sense shakes hands in pledge and puts up security for a neighbor. Whoever loves a quarrel loves sin. Whoever builds a high gate invites destruction. One whose heart is corrupt does not prosper. One whose tongue is perverse falls into trouble. To have a fool for a child brings grief. There is no joy for the parent of a godless fool. A cheerful heart is good medicine, but a crushed spirit dries up the bones. The wicked accept bribes in secret to pervert the course of justice. A discerning person keeps wisdom in view, but a fool's eyes wander to the ends of the earth. A foolish son brings grief to his father, 
and bitterness to the mother who bore him. If imposing a fine on the innocent is not good, surely to flog honest officials is not right. The one who has knowledge uses words with restraint, and whoever has understanding is even-tempered. Even fools are thought wise if they keep silent, and discerning if they hold their tongues. Some good uh, uh, wisdom there towards the end of the, that chapter uh, that stood out to me. Um, discerning person keeps wisdom in, in view, but a fool's eyes, they wander to the ends of the earth, they're always looking around. Um, the one who has knowledge uses words with restraint. Um, whoever's understanding is even tempered. That was a good one. And then even fools are thought wise if they keep silent and discerning if they hold their tongues. So there's a lot of wisdom in keeping silent and holding our tongues. Well, congratulations again on finishing on another book in the Bible. And uh, let me pray for us. And then uh, I hope you uh, join us in worship today or or uh, get somewhere to, uh, to worship with the family of God. Let's pray together. Father, thank you so much for uh, this day. Thank you, God, for each one, Lord, as they uh, have finished up another book in the Bible. Lord, I pray your blessing over each one as they, as they worship you today. God, may they experience rest of their souls. And uh, Lord, may they be replenished by your spirit. Father, we thank you, God, for uh, this day that you've given to us. May your blessing, Lord, rest on each one. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Well, thanks for joining me. God bless you. Hope you have a wonderful Sabbath today. And uh, we'll see you tomorrow.